be a more traditional painting format. So he brings together two kinds of identities. He's, his identity as a modern artist who's using oil, uh, who's trained uh, in an art school, in a pedagogic style that, that's by this time uh, closely following um, similar art pedagogy in Europe. And, he, and so, so the artist combined Western techniques, but at the same time, he represents himself working uh, on, a, on a more traditional painterly style. So he brings together uh, this kind of um, what might call emblematic hybridity um, that is already inherent to Nepal's art in the early 20th century. And in India, he would have been trained by artists like Mukulde, and he would have been very, very familiar with the on earlier conventions of painting in, it, in traditional painting. In time, he would have been working with Atul Bose, an artist who had been trained. With the arrival of Lane Singh Bandel uh, from Paris, and, he, and, he, and the artist returns to Nepal in um, 1961 after being trained uh, in, in Paris. And by the time he comes back to Nepal, he's already experimenting with abstraction, which an abstract, an abstract painting had by, this, by the 1960s become a kind of a lingua franca of an international art world. And Bangdale's interest in abstraction is not surprising because the artist's own biography was inherently transnational and cosmopolitan. Uh, Bangdale was born in Darjeeling in India and he had initially been trained uh, at the Government College of Arts and Crafts where he would have worked uh, with artists like Adul Bose. Um, but even in India, even during his time in India, Bangdale's quest um, for an identity that was different from his Indian contemporaries becomes very, very obvious. Um, for instance, we find him painting idyllic landscapes of Nepal, a Nepal that he had never visited, a Nepal of his imagination. Um, and so, so one finds in him a kind of a quest for a homeland uh, that he has imagined but never visited. And it's precisely at this time uh, that Bangdel also begins to write socialist realist novels um, and, and the characters in the novels actually deal with struggles of the expatriate Nepali community in India. So Bangdel is already aware not just of tradition and modernity but his own identity as a modern Nepali artist. Um, and even after he moves to Paris for our training we find him constantly returning um, to Nepali themes. For instance, the Mona Modern series, which reflects, um, and perhaps um, Manik Man Chitrakar becomes uh, emblematic of this different strand. Manik, Man, Manik Man Chitrakar was primarily uh, an artist who painted religious imagery, and he hailed from a family of traditional painters. Um, and he was trained in a traditional painting style. If Bangdel's works circulated primarily in a secular context, Manik Man Chitrakar's works could often be encountered in, in temples, in bhajan shalas, where people came together to sing bhajans. Um, so, two very different audiences. But yet, if we look closely at Manik Man's paintings, we find the artist departing significantly from traditional modes of depiction. For instance, the background shows a distinctly naturalistic landscape. We see receding perspective. All of these are made, the, but, but the brocade here is merely a painted and framing. The figure on the right, uh, Udaya Churin's work, is perhaps most exemplary of a new Nevar style. Um, his use of the oil medium, of course, is a radical departure from tradition. So is the heightened realism of the figures, which is evident in the figures' three-dimensionality, the trauma, the attention to bodily proportions, and in particular, the striking intensity of the gaze, an almost portrait-like realism of the face. And this becomes the artist's marked signature style. Um, simultaneously, the artist references 
There were Tantric traditions where Annapurna is worshipped in an, an iconic form as a vase of plenty, and, the, and here we see the vase appearing as an emblem. So, in some senses, there are there are all these multiple strands. There is there is Bangdel's nostalgia and a longing from ho for home. There is and and Bangdel represents that in a kind of a completely modernist uh, representation and language. At the same time, there is the reworking of tradition, um, the adoption of earlier painting strategies uh, in contemporary Nepal to represent religious icons. And all of these strands, to my mind, come together in Ruwak's work. In the sense that Ruwak, I think, is in part in conversation with all of these traditions that I, that I very briefly and synoptically laid out, there is in Ruwak the longing for Kathmandu, uh, lo long, the longing for Mark Antole in 1973. But at the same time, there is Manjushri as energy. Manjushri represented not as in an iconic form, but to represent the energy that the icon brings forward. Um, and these, these trends, the religious, the non-religious, the iconic, the non-iconic, uh, the traditional, the modern, all of this sits comfortably, as we have seen, in, in Nepali art from, from the late 19th and early 20th century onwards, in contemporary Nepali art as well. And all of these things, I think, is what uh, your work is in conversation with. Thank you. challenge uh, hegemonic constructs of tradition, hegemonic constructs of religion, or even the Western epistemes that frame our conversation around the visual culture of Nepal. And as I was looking through Yuvok's painting, I, I was reminded of David Carrier's recent book called Museum Skepticism, where he works with the central idea that of metamorphosis to show how a religious artifact becomes a work of art and a music. And that's, that's an idea that I want to take up today to think about how, how religious iconography and yeah, the play between secularism and religion, between icon and a work of art. Carrier and other scholars would argue, for instance, that the display of Buddhist relics from South Asia at the Met reiterates this cultural osmosis the transformation of a religious icon into a work of art. Our understanding of non-Western images and artifacts are thus framed through a cultural and cognitive lens that is quintessentially Western. Buddhist relics, sacred objects, shed their original meaning and acquire new ones as they move. I'm not really an art historian or art critic, I'm basically a British But I'm, uh, I'm involved with the Nepali art scene in many ways. I'm more involved with the promotion of art. This is a kind of very dear concept of art. And when Dina, Dina Bangadev could not come here, unfortunately, today, she would have given more information, but I'll do my best as an old like, art lover. Uh, notes uh, painting like. Uh, I've been looking at it from the web and I also have an opportunity to look at it in the Himalayan flavor uh, restaurant, which is displayed. Uh, it 
it seems to me that uh, his painting uh, can be located in multiple traditions of Nepali art. First, there is this tradition of uh, Nepali painting. Some of our best and earliest painters have been Nepalese, beginning with Rajuman Chitrakar, what you talk about, and then Tejasvan uh, Chitrakar in the early 20th century, and now Susan Chitrakar in the 21st century. And there are other Dinesh Chesta, uh, like uh, Lokman Chitrakar. There are so many Nepali painters. So I would locate his tradition within the Nepali tradition of Nepali painting. That is one thing. The second thing is, uh, I would also locate his paintings within this uh, the tradition of Buddhist painting with its roots in Oga painting, which in which Buddhist themes or the depictions of Buddha or those are done more as a kind of a they create an artifact. The painting becomes a tool for contemplation. So that's that's that kind of trick. But now many modern Nepali artists are like using those Buddhist themes in a different kind of way, where the painting is not only a tool for contemplation, but painting is a kind of art, as an art itself. It's like. So I would put his work within that tradition as well. And then also in the tradition of modern Nepal, Nepali art in general, like Lain Singh Bhandil is so arguably, he's, maybe he's described as the first uh, modernist Nepali painter in the 50s, when he came up with one of the series and all that. And then later in the 60s, Nepali art moved, Nepali modern art moved into different directions. Some people were doing surrealism, like Sashi Vikram Shah and Manoj Babu Mishra and some other people. Some people moved towards expressionism, like abstract expressionism, ex abstract expressionism like uh, Kiran Mahananda and Lashmar Sestra and others. Like, so, I see his painting within that modernist Nepali tradition. Another thing is regarding the contemporary art scene of Nepal. I think contemporary Nepali art is a mixture of various things. Pauva painting and Thanga painting, you know, is doing great. <coughs> At the same time, some people are working within this realistic frame. Some other people are using various forms of modernism, surrealism, expressionism, abstract expressionism, abstraction, etc. And there are uh, people like uh, Susan Chitrakar and Asmina Ranji. Both of them are coming to US on Fulbright Scholarship for six months soon. So hopefully they will have a chance to come here as well. Uh, Susan and Asmina uh, work more, uh, more on installation art and performance art and more uh, conceptual art. So they produce different kinds of art. There is this person called Sudarshan uh, Rana and Sunita Rana. They produce video art. So Nepali art is a mixture of various things, not only it is a mixture of, so I would say the contemporary Nepali art scene is a mixture of traditional, modern and the postmodern. I think it is this juxtaposition, sometimes I feel that it is this juxtaposition between tradition and modernity, That's, that juxtaposition produces this postmodernity, uh, contemporary Nepali art. Uh, after 1991, when we had the first, so-called like first revolution, and up to this point, Nepal has gone through uh, difficult political phases. We have had Royal Massacre, we had 10 years Maoist War, now we have this second revolution after which Nepal turned from uh, monarchy into a republic. So all these political happenings have inspired Nepali artists to create political art. Many installation and performance artists are doing that. Some, some, some are doing that with video, and some, some of them are doing that with photography, various kinds of uh, mixed art forms they are creating. And, uh, and even the uh, painters, like for example, uh, let's say Kiran Mahan, uh, who draws within the frame of abstract expressionism, he, in his shows, you know, he uses, uh, sometimes he has used cuttings from the newspaper describing the political happenings and how that has inspired his art. So that's an example of you know, like political art. Sashi Bikram Shah is a surrealistic painter. He's very famous for his horses, mythological horses. But those mythological horses become political horses <laughs> in some of the things that he's creating now. Uh, so this kind of political turn is what I see in contemporary Nepali art. Uh, and even you know, I have seen Buddhist themes being used in contemporary Nepali art. So, it's, it's, so there's one question of looking at Buddhist art by placing that art within a kind of a spiritual religious domain.
but you can also take Buddha out of the spiritual domain and put him in the political domain and see what happens. And uh, many artists are doing that also. And the question is, you know, what we can learn from Buddhism in the current political context? Nepal, birthplace of Buddha, but also a place for a lot of bloodshed now. So what, what does that mean? So that uh, has been very interesting to me. Uh, finally, you know, like, it was so nice to meet you. As you said, you don't know, you are still seeking themes for our art. Don't know where it will go next. You might do some more of this or some more of that. Or mix them together and create your own hybrid styles. Or you might uh, make a move towards political art, political art and see what happens. We don't know. Uh, but you know, I thoroughly enjoyed looking at your art and uh, thank you so much. I'd also like to uh, thank Alex for inviting me. I'm more of a walk-on. I was in the Bay Area this week. And I'm very happy to see Alex Art and to um, have a chance to speak a bit about Nebo our uh, civilization, Nebo our culture and society. Um, and being last and having no slides or anything to show, I feel a little embarrassed because I like to use images. Um, but perhaps what I can give is a different kind of angle on this. Um, I am a scholar of Buddhism and trained uh, anthropologically, and I arrived in Asantol, the home region. I know his house area very well. Uh, I arrived there about the time he left. I was there to study tradition, and he was going off to study something else, at least outside of my home territory. So that's, in a way, the globalization and, and um, mass-produced forms that were coming out of Tibet early on when China was restoring sort of Tibet as a place that was uh, to be visited. Um, so I think about art as an anthropologist also about artists producing to make a living, to sell their art. And, um, and so what Chitrakars were doing in my experience, besides those, is on, those on the fringes, painting in new styles, maybe their family had already been quite successful, they were drawing simple painted objects for ritual use. Let's say an Astamangala uh, painting sketches or um, protective rituals in which the house is consecrated. You put items in the eight directions for a mandala out uh, on, in the crossroads across the city. You had needed little paintings for that. Um, and so that um, that's what the Chittakars I was experienced uh, with and, and seeing uh, working in regular Tulater homes uh, for, for these very uh, ritual purposes. Uh, they also would paint a standard uh, scene on the entryways of Newar houses that would show the Pancha Buddha, the five Buddhas, and the Astamangala, the eight auspicious things, as well as the side panels on Newar doors. That's working art. And I guess it won't surprise some of my friends here in Buddhist Studies. I'm interested in more in working art than in you know, the, what could be the uh, high tradition, or at least I'm not going to ignore um, the working art in the network context. The, the genre that's not represented, as far as I've seen here, and, and um, one of the major genres of network art is narrative art. That is, uh, paintings that depict certain popular stories, either from the Buddhist to the Hindu story literature. Um, and in this, and I, I've collected some of these too, where you show, let's say, a jataka like the Mahasattva Rajkumar Jataka. Um, most of you who study Buddhist texts or have some awareness of them, this is where he throws, the Bodhisattva throws himself down to a starving tigress who's about to eat her cups. And, um, and, and he, he's completely giving of himself for the good of the tigress. It's a kind of relatively peculiar story of a man giving his life for the tigers. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, no, but I still don't feel, I'm among 50 who don't feel homesick, ever feel homesick. And I have a lot of hate, kind of, you know, kind of mixed uh, feeling about uh, my experience in Nepal. Um, 
even when I was a little kid, I, I didn't know anything about America. Still, I feel like I don't belong there. I, I want to get out of there. And when I was 17, I went to art school in India. And the first time I got to that room there, there was nothing. There was a fan, a little bed. I just felt I was in heaven. Wow. <laughs> Wow, I you know this is you know, I want I'm away. Yet I can't stop painting about Nepal. And I always have recurring dreams where I go to Kathmandu and I forget to take my camera. I see a great landscape, I don't have a camera. That that happened like that's my recurring dream. <laughs> now my wife uh, this year really wants me to go. Uh, you know, maybe I have this fear of I don't know uh, I'm still painting the past that doesn't exist, and my friends told me that we should get you know, get together and do and nothing. None of that exists now. It's changed dramatically. People are different, and, and everybody says you'll be you know you have to think like you're going to a different country. Um, it's like a new country, not like if I try to go and find my past there, I'll be very disappointed. Um, but I'm preparing and. Uh, and I love Nepal, and yet I've been, you know, also in the meantime, I didn't want to live there. And I have, I don't know why I'm distant. I can, I feel like I can see Nepal even much clearer than when I was there. And I'm, I think now I will value a lot of things that I didn't value when I was there. And also, uh, when I was there, the art scene was very different. It's almost like a, there were, uh, there were like some groups of people were trained in India. Very few, few were trained in America or Europe. And there was this struggle between this tradition where tradition we have. We're not supposed to do something rowdy. You know, we, we, we're not like loud kind of people. And so nobody dared to make, uh, you know, uh, uh, like a photograph of like you know like Matt, Robert Mabel third would do or you know something nothing you know we always even when people painted abstract you're supposed to paint abstract only if you know realistic really well kind of I grew up in that tradition you know, and this I felt like people were really struggling they wanted to paint modern but yet they're they're not supposed to because you know they're supposed to stick to but. Even though I haven't been for a long time, I've been have a lot of Facebook friends in Bali artists now. And I'm looking at their work; it's changing dramatically, and and also there are a lot of them trained in India or uh, America and also China. I'm seeing China is a, a really uh, also influencing quite a lot. Uh, so it's a, it's interesting. It's, it's it's much different from when I was there. And some artists are really, I want to paint painters, I believe, like with Nate Limbo. I saw his painting. And with uh, Bidata and Kesi. Um, you know, I, I'm friends, I'm contemporary with uh, Ragini. Uh, you know, Ragini is about, uh, maybe she's a year older than me or something. She went to art school in Lucknow. And so Ragin is very, um, you know, working, uh, you know, one of the most successful artists. Um, so I'm seeing, you know, a lot of positive uh, outcome in, in the policy. When I was there, I felt like not much happening, but it's it's very different. And it's uh, and there's a uh, there the new college, and and their shows are really impressive. Sort of this neo Chinese, neo Chinese um, uh, brush painting, some modern themes, uh, Buddhist themes, Kuan Yin. I mean, you have forms of the Bodhisattva Avalokiteshvara in ways that were never depicted in the local tradition. You know, the Kuan Yin is a woman, for example. You don't see that in any more art. Uh, so I think it's part of this massive presence of Chinese goods that come to. I have a question for you, but you book is this. Please. Good. 
I don't care really formulate my question, maybe it's a bit tendentious, but I'm going to do it anyway. Mm -hmm. Kind of an underlying theme was that an art which is taken out of its original context, put in, in a museum, within that museum it loses its context. And there's a sense in which the context here has that. No, this is, it, it's not that, but in other words, one has art and then one has a modern context within it's being looked at. And so there's a certain performance sense going on. And it's almost tendentious what I'm saying. But for some reason, given what everybody was saying, it just came up. I must say, I really did enjoy the performances, if you will. You know, in other words, the parts which go together. It's not like a museum in that sense, which can be offensive, as you might say. But still, it's fascinating to see the context within which it goes on. So, yeah, just go there. Anybody want? Sugar, do you want to comment on it? I think uh, the, 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 the performative gesture of looking at art in a museum or in an academic context or let's say the temple, there are various ways and there is a certain contemplation that is expected out of religious icons in a temple or in a sacred context that is not expected or in let's say the museum or the academy. So I would in a certain way draw a difference between thinking about a thangka or a Buddhist sculpture in a, in a temple or in someone's shrine at someone's house versus the PowerPoint here or in the museum. Thank you. Uh, with uh, my humble ap humble apology, uh, whether it may be a question or a comment, um, I was a little hurt um, when Mr. Uh, Lewis uh, was um, explaining uh, his part. Uh, he said those Tibetans living in Chinese territory. That was his statement. So um, I I. I believe everybody knows China invaded Tibet and Chinese are living in Tibetan territory. Not Tibetans are living in Chinese territory. Um, we Tibetans are going through the hardest time of the history. And uh, it hurt with me uh, when you make a statement like that. Um, so I just uh, didn't you want, want, you to, want to comment. Do you want to I just to didn't want to be deaf and dumb. <laughs> I wanted to express my feeling. Uh, that's uh, that's the, the part of the thing. Thank you so much. Thank you. I'm sorry you were hurt by the comment. I'm, I was just talking about the real politic of today. It has nothing to do with what I wish were true or what is um, what ought to be true. It's just the fact that. They were going to Lhasa or entering Chinese territory with a Chinese passport. I, I regret much that's happened in the last 50 or 60 years, including what my own government did or didn't do to let that stand. But it has nothing to do with trying to offend your cultural identity in any way. Painting, I mean to say, the Pova paintings. And people like to call it Tanga because. Um, it's similar as Tanka, but um, if you see the painting Tanka and the Pova, then you will realize there are little difference. And I do oil paintings too, and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same, but the technique is different. And I try, I will always try to do the. Um, a Tanga painting as, I mean to say, the Pova painting as Pova. And realistic painting, like in the um, which date is I do on uh, by the oil painting, that is a little different than that. So people like both, of, both kind of paintings and they appreciate that. So now it is I'm doing both kind of paintings. Thank you.
If there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. of our paintings, and people like to call it Tanga, because um, it's similar as Tanga. But um, if you see the painting, Tanga and the Pova, then you will realize there are little difference. And I do oil paintings too, and those oil paintings are, um, the deities are same, but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I mean to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which date is I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So. Now it is I'm doing what kind of paintings. Thank you. If, if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. Our paintings and people like to call it Tanga because um, it's similar as Tanga but um, if you see the painting Tanga and the Pova then you will realize there are little difference and I do oil paintings too and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I mean to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which date is I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So. Now it is I'm doing what kind of paintings. Thank you. If, if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. the Pova paintings, and people like to call it Tanga, because um, it's similar as Tanga. But um, if you see the painting, Tanga and the Pova, then you will realize there are little difference. And I do oil paintings too, 
and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same, but the technique is different. And I try, I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I mean to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which deities I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So now it is I'm doing both kind of paintings. Thank you. If if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. Our paintings and people like to call it tanka because um, it's similar as tanka but um, if you see the painting tanka and the pova then you will realize there are little difference and I do oil paintings too and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I mean to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which deities I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So. Now it is I'm doing what kind of paintings. Thank you. If, if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. paintings and people like to call it tanga because um, it's similar as tanga but um, if you see the painting tanga and the pova then you will realize there are little difference and I do oil paintings too and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I mean to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which deities I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So. Now it is I'm doing what kind of paintings. Thank you. If, if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. 
he's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you know you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. Over paintings, and people like to call it tanga because um, it's similar as tanga. But um, if you see the painting tanga and the pova, then you will realize there are little difference. And I do oil paintings too, and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same, but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I mean to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which date is I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So. Now it is I'm doing what kind of paintings. Thank you. If, if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. Pova paintings, and people like to call it tanga because um, it's similar as tanga. But um, if you see the painting tanga and the pova, then you will realize there are little difference. And I do oil paintings too, and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same, but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I mean to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which date is I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So. Now it is I'm doing what kind of paintings. Thank you. If, if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. the pova paintings, and people like to call it tanga because um, it's similar as tanga. But um, if you see the painting tanga and the pova, then you will realize there are little difference. And I do oil paintings too, and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same, but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I mean to say the pova painting as pova, 
and realistic painting like in the um, which the it is I do on uh, by the oil painting that is a little different than that so people like both of both kind of paintings and they appreciate that so now it is I'm doing both kind of paintings thank you If there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. Our paintings and people like to call it tanka because um, it's similar as tanka but um, if you see the painting tanka and the popa then you will realize there are little difference and I do oil paintings too and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I need to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which the it is I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So. Now it is I'm doing what kind of paintings. Thank you. If, if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming. Our paintings and people like to call it tanga because um, it's similar as tanga but um, if you see the painting tanga and the pova then you will realize there are little difference and I do oil paintings too and those oil paintings are um, the deities are same but the technique is different, and I try. I will always try to do the um, a tanga painting as I need to say the pova painting as pova, and realistic painting like in the um, which the it is I do on uh, by the oil painting. That is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So. Now it is I'm doing what kind of paintings. Thank you. If, if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist, Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when Yuvak will leave this building, all the paintings on the walls will keep hanging there. He's not allowed to take them with him until May. <laughs> so um, I hope many of you will have an opportunity to return to our halls and look at the art again. But of course, the idea is also that uh, you, know, you get some finger food and drinks and revel at the art um, that is at this place. Thank you very, very much for coming.
the Pova paintings. And people like to call it Tanka because um, it's similar as Tanka. But um, if you see the painting Tanka and the Pova, then you will realize there are little difference. And I do oil paintings too. And those oil paintings are, um, the deities are same, but the technique is different. And I, try, I will always try to do the um, a Tanga painting as, I mean to say the Pauva painting as Pauva. And realistic painting, like in the, um, which deities I do on, uh, by the oil painting, that is a little different than that. So people like both of both kind of paintings, and they appreciate that. So now it is I'm doing both kind of paintings. Thank you. If if there are no pressing further questions, um, I would um, like to thank our panelists again. I would like to thank our artist Yuvak Tulada. It's a great pleasure that even when you 